Hello, everyone. It's uh, Wednesday, January the 26th, 2022. Like I said before, it's hard to imagine, really. Uh, for those of us that have been around a good little while, time really moves on, does it not? And it's 2022. It's just hard to, it's hard to imagine. Uh, nevertheless, uh, which is way more tragic in, in every way, but we've, uh, we've lost another 29 West Virginians I ask you to join with me, with me in prayer and thoughts and, and, and loving, uh, you know, pass, pass ons in every way to these people because, because uh, we've lost a lot of great people in West Virginia. Now we're up to 5,674 people, but uh, the 5,646 death is a 53 year old male from Nicholas County. The 5,647th death, a 54 year old male from Preston County. The 5,648th death, an 80-year-old female from Jefferson County. The 5,649th death, a 63-year-old female from Barber County. The 5,650th death, an 86-year-old female from Preston County. The 5,651st death, a 48-year-old male from Mercer County. The 5,652nd death, a 78-year-old male from Barber County. The 5,653rd death, an 86-year-old female from Boone County. The 5,654th death, a 74-year-old male from Lincoln County. The 5,655th death, a 67-year-old male from Cabell County. The 5,656th death, a 65-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 5,657th death, a 90-year-old female from Cabell County. The 5,658th death, a 70-year-old female from, from Mercer County. The 5,659th death, a 62-year-old female from Fayette County. The 5,660th death, a 74-year-old male from Mercer County. The 5,661st death, an 86-year-old female from Braxton County. The 5,662nd death, a 79-year-old male from Cabell County. The 5,663rd death, an 80-year-old female from Ritchie County. The 5,664th death, a 59-year-old female from Wood County. The 5,665th death, a 74-year-old male from Lincoln County. The 5,666th death, a 66-year-old female from Mercer County. The 5,667th death, an 84-year-old male from Putnam County. The 5,668th death, a 65-year-old female from Lincoln County. The 5,669th death, a 77-year-old male from Berkeley County. The 5,670th death, a 75-year-old female from Wetzel County. The 5,671st death, a uh, yeah, the 5,671st death, a 71-year-old male from Harrison County. The 5,672nd death, a 91-year-old female from Kanawha County. The 5,673rd death, an 86-year-old female from Ohio County. And the 5,674th death in West Virginia, a 66-year-old male from Barber County. A lot of wisdom, a lot, a lot of folks we've lost. I think the youngest of, of all these today was a 48-year-old male from Mercer County. My, my. Mm -mm -mm. We have 18,149 active cases in West Virginia and 4,003 new cases within the last 24 hours. Our daily positivity rates at 22.01% and our cumulative positive rate is at 7.85. We do have a 405 plus people, 405 1,193 people that have recovered from this in West Virginia. But get this, we are now above 1,000 that are hospitalized. 1,009 are hospitalized. 218 are in the ICU units and 115 of those patients are on ventilators. Overwhelmingly, the majority of those folks that are, are, are in the hospitals and or sick and on ventilators in, or in the ICU units are unvaccinated. And, but we are coming, we are making a little progress, you know, with our, with the color codes across our state. We've dropped some of the red counties and, and you can see over in, I guess, the uh, eastern central part of the state, 
you know, uh, we've got at least an area there that we're making some progress and, and way out in the eastern panhandle as well and the northern panhandle. So, so uh, a little progress. We'll take a little. Uh, here's a really important announcement. Uh, the FDA announced on Monday that it is no longer permitting the use of two major monoclonal antibody treatments. And there's, so there's two of the antibodies that they are no longer, uh, you know, allowing from the standpoint that they, they think the antibodies, you know, inviting this Omicron vir variant have not been very effective. They're, they're, they're in, and Dr. Dr. Marsh and General Hoyer can give you a whole lot more in detail stuff about that and they'll be doing that in just a few moments. You know, I thank our National Guard again now as of this morning, and I'm, I'm sure that this is going to be updated by General Hoyer as it's been every day, you know, but, but uh, my, my sheet says 206, you know, Guards members have been uh, deployed and at 26 different facilities. That's probably a, even a little higher than that, but, uh, but we thank them. You know, I don't know what, how we could have done without them. That's all there is to it. And in fact, I know we couldn't have done without them, but... Uh, but we really do thank them and they've done great, great work. The Biden administration's offering the every household in America for free, you know, at home COVID test. And uh, you can get these at uh, covidtest.gov. You know, if you'll go on our website, you can see where to get them. There's also free N95 masks that are available out there. And the White House said that these will become available or these will be, be made available to pharmacies and the community health centers, and they should be able to get them later this week or first of next week. I remind you again about your 65 and older. Just think what happened to me. Immediately, immediately, I got tested. I was positive and everything. We moved forward and everything. We're catching this at an early stage is always really valuable to all of us. I encourage you about wearing your face mask if you go out in a crowd of people indoors that you don't know and you're 65 and older and you have any compromising, you know, situations, absolutely, it's probably a really good idea to think about that face mask. Here's the thing I keep preaching over and over. I don't see how in the world, again and again and again, I've said, if you've been fully vaccinated, you've gotten two shots of Moderna, two shots of Pfizer, one shot of J&J, &J, and you're out six months from when you got that shot, last shot, you have no immunities. And how in the world you could not run to the fire and get that booster shot, I just don't get it. I don't understand. So please, please consider getting that done and getting across the finish line on that because we want you protected. We don't want our hospitals overrun. And, and, we, and we're right at the brink right now but absolutely, we need you protected because we want you here with us for a long, long time to come. You know, uh, numbers haven't changed much. Still eking up just a little bit. We're at 70.7% .7 now of those that are 18 and above that have received at least one shot. You know, and 82.3 uh, of the 50 above and 89.6 of 65 and above. Young people, I say it over and over, parents, grandparents, help me. Help me get the young people across the finish line. We need more and more of them vaccinated. Uh, you know, all the information on the vaccine info line is up. I encourage you on the free testing. Take advantage. I always thank Fruth and Walgreens for all that they've done. We've got 155 outbreaks in our long-term care facilities, one outbreak in our church community, we do have 667 inmate cases at 27 different facilities and 209 staff cases in corrections. I'll promise you our people are on it in every way and I hope and pray that we'll get that turned the other way immediately and things will start coming down. I encourage you about taking the flu shot. You can do it at the same time you take the COVID vaccine. I encourage you, if you're a renter or a landlord, to contact us and see if you qualify for these dollars and everything. We'd love to get them in your hands if we can. I encourage you over and over about giving blood. It's really, really, really important. Please take advantage and help us in every way. 
The Red Cross needs you right now and they need you badly. There's a lot of folks out there that can really, really use your help. I check with your physician and make sure it's okay, but if it's okay and you're good to go, please think about that. I'm gonna give my state of the state address on, at seven o'clock on Thursday night and I uh, encourage everybody to tune in and everything. There's some, gonna be some, some more exciting announcements, but uh, you know, I don't know how we'll trump the ones that we already came out with and everything, but nevertheless, I'd surely welcome you to, to tune in and uh, I'll be doing the best that I can do and, and, and hopefully we'll be bringing more and more good news to West Virginia. And the last thing I've got is a big, giant congratulations. We got a basketball coach that I can remember her playing basketball just like it was yesterday. You know, and that's Coach Stevens that's at Glenville State. Glenville State's women's basketball program is now ranked, and I love it. I love it to death when I can announce something from West Virginia that we're ranked first in the nation. Glenville State's women's basketball program is now ranked first in the nation. They were ranked third. They jumped two spots. They have never been ranked number one in the nation in, this, in the history of the school. They're 16-0 and 0 under Kim Stevens as their head coach, and I congratulate them in every way in the world. You know, uh, I had a little kid that played basketball for me a couple years ago. She's a wonderful, wonderful young lady, and uh, her dad is on my detail. Her dad's name is David Hill, but Autumn Hill, you know, played a little bit of basketball at Glenville State and everything, developed a few little health issues or, you know, or significant health issues, but, uh, but she loved it, and she just thought it was just great. And so I congratulate all these beautiful young ladies, I'm sure, that are playing, you know, for Glenville State, and more than anything, I congratulate their coach, I congratulate, you know, Mark Maynard, and, or Manchin rather, and all the great stuff that he's done, you know, since he took the helm as president of that school and everything. But it is a wonderful school, and, uh, and I, I couldn't be happier for him. I mean, that's great stuff. So, Lady Pioneers, you just keep doing it and make us proud. You already made us really proud, but even make us prouder. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Governor. Let's now go to Dr. Clay Marsh, our coronavirus czar. Good morning, and, and re-emphasizing a few of the points the governor's made, we are seeing the continued growth of the Omicron variant uh, in West Virginia, and the governor talked about monoclonal antibodies. And let me just review where we are related to our, um, our next generation sequencing of, all, of the positive viruses. We test about 10% of the positive uh, PCR tests in West Virginia on a weekly basis, which is somewhere around 370 to 390 samples every week. Um, and, and on December 13th, we found that there was no Omicron virus detected in those positive samples and 100% were Delta. The week of, uh, of the Christmas vacation on 1225, we found 3.2% of the, of the samples were Omicron, the rest Delta. On 1229, 16% Omicron, 84% Delta. On 17, we found that about 50% of the state was Omicron. On 115, 82% Omicron, 124, 94% Omicron. In the US, Omicron accounts for almost all of the new cases now. And because of that characteristic, the federal government has, has found through research through the CDC and other investigators that these antibodies are very specific to spike proteins on the virus. And the Omicron variant has a, a whole number of mutations in these spike proteins, over 30, that cause these spike proteins to fold differently. And the Regeneron antibodies, which is the antibody that President Trump took, and the Lilly antibody don't have the same beneficial activity against Omicron because of these mutations in the spike proteins. The one antibody that does is produced by GlaxoSmithKline is called Citrovimab. And so what the government has decided and what we would agree with based on all of the research, 
that the Regeneron and the Lilly antibodies that were good against the Delta variant are not effective against the Omicron variant. And so they stopped approving those for use for the Omicron variant because they don't work. And now we are really focused on the uh, Citrovimab, which is the new antibody that does bind with, um, with enough um, binding power that it can still benefit people who have uh, Omicron. And, and that's indeed what we are giving now as the monoclonal antibody of choice in West Virginia and around the country. We also have the oral pill, the Paxlovid, and, which is the pill from Pfizer, the Molnupiravir, the pill from Merck, and also the Remdesivir, which is a drug that can be given on three consecutive days. And all these treatments uh, that we have against Omicron are highly effective um, and reduces the risk of hospitalizations in people who are testing positive, who do have risk factors because of age or coexisting medical problems or lack of an immune system that responds well, people that are immunocompromised. Also, it's important for us to recognize that we just surpassed the, um, the seven-day rolling average death toll per day uh, with Omicron from Delta. And as people have said, that on a person-by-person -person basis, Omicron is less deadly than Delta is. And that's been shown in research studies. About nine people, I think, out of 100,000 infected die of Omicron. And 12 people died of Delta, or 16 people died of Delta, and 12, no, 12 people died of Delta, and 16 people died before the vaccines were available of some of those variants when we had the highest peak. But it's important to recognize that our hospital numbers are still very high. The governor reported that we remember our all time high was 1,012. Um, in yesterday's numbers, we had 1,009. Today's numbers just came out, and we're now up to 1,043 people in West Virginia hospital beds. So we have now surpassed our all time high. And as the governor said, um, even though our cases look like they may be starting to plateau, we know that at our percent positive rate, still very high, still over 20% percent positive. So we are still believing that we are still watching some of the growth of, of the Omicron variant spread in West Virginia. Our hospitals are full and, and in the US our death rates uh, have now exceeded the death rates on an average daily basis of what we saw during Delta, most likely because of the really great numbers of people that are hospitalized. Really important that people recognize new data from the CDC would say that your risk of dying from Omicron is 100, 100 times higher if you are unvaccinated versus if you're fully vaccinated and boosted. And data from Israel demonstrates that if you're fully vaccinated and boosted, you also have a lower risk of long COVID symptoms uh, related to infections with Omicron. So the data is very clear. We talked about it that last press brief. I won't rehash it, but your risk of being hospitalized is substantially diminished 50 times or so if you're uh, over 65 and, and, and 44 times if you're over 50. Your risk of dying is over 100 times less if you're fully vaccinated and boosted. And we know that Omicron is now responsible for basically all of our new infections as well as that in the country. And we know that this is spreading very rapidly and leading to hospital numbers that are, have now exceeded any hospital numbers that we've seen at any other time in the pandemic. Time to choose vaccination for you and your family and your children. Time for us to pull the rope together and run to the fire. Make sure you get your boosters if you're eligible. And please consider wearing a high quality mask if you're inside because we cannot surge the hospitals um, and we have to really focus as an entire state on trying to protect that valuable asset. So we protect the health of the citizens of this great state. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dr. Marsh. Next, we'll hear from retired Major General Jim Hoyer, the director of our Joint Interagency Task Force. Good morning. As the governor pointed out, we had a couple of updates as the press conference started. Dr. Marsh uh, highlighted the 1,043 hospitalizations. In addition, uh, National Guard requests are now 29 facilities, one of those being a long-term care facility, 214 guardsmen, and there are discussions going on now during the press conference with other facilities uh, for requested support. So we'll continue to keep you updated 
And as the governor pointed out, we appreciate the great work of the National Guard and being flexible and responding to these uh, needs quickly. Uh, also highlight that, uh, as the governor pointed out, we have got to get particularly our 50 and above population booster doses. 50 and above is only 51% on our boosters. 65 and above, only 56.6%. As Dr. Marsh pointed out, it's critical to, to that, as well as vaccinations in general. Uh, we know as of today, 92% of the people on ventilators in our hospitals, uh, who many tend not to come out of that uh, uh, ventilator situation, 92% of those individuals are unvaccinated West Virginians. So we've really got to press uh, vaccinations. Also, a quick update. There have been some discussion yesterday and some concern uh, that we were pulling uh, antibodies out of locations. That is not accurate. Uh, as Dr. Marsh and the governor pointed out, there is now two of the antibodies that we are no longer able to use because they do not work effectively on the Omicron variant, which is the most significant variant that we have now. As Dr. Marsh pointed out, uh, the citrovimab we, we do have, and we get uh, uh, 312 units of that. Uh, just to put it in perspective, the ideal number for West Virginia would be 1,000, but because of the supply chain issues, we get 312. Although we are out of 66 jurisdictions that receive uh, antibody and antivirals, we are about 22nd or 26th, depending on the week in, in allocation. So we are getting, uh, based on the supply chain availability, a uh, our, more than our fair share of the, uh, the amount, but it is not quite enough, uh, clearly based on the numbers. Also, uh, we do have Paxlovid uh, uh, available, uh, although as Dr. Marsh, Dr. Amjad would tell you, there are uh, challenges with uh, prescribing that because of contraindications. But again, we uh, are continually pressing to get additional antibody and antiviral treatments and making them available in more locations across the state. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Anam Judd and Secretary Bill Crouch are also joining us today and are available for questions. We'll now go to questions from members of the media. The first today from Kenny Bass with WCHS and Fox 11. Hi, good morning. Thanks for taking the question. Dr. Marsh, how high is that number going to go in hospitalizations? I know you guys have a pretty good feel for it. Either you or General Hoyer from doing your tabletop exercises and seeing where the number of infections are going. What did the numbers tell you about hospitalizations in the next few weeks? Thank you. Dr. Marsh. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, Kenny. You know, to to believe that we can project an exact number is 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 probably foolhardy, Kenny. But what we know is that there is a delay between when cases peak and plateau and start to come down. And then following that, about five to maybe 10 to 14 days, we see then a peak of hospitalizations. Then in the following week or so, we'll see the severity of the illness start to, to go up. And then we'll see deaths as the last indicator. But given the, the growth that we've seen, even though we know that the Omicron variant from data from the CDC leads to shorter hospital stays on average than Delta, kills on average fewer people and requires fewer hospitalizations than the great number of cases, we are very, very worried that our hospital numbers have not come close to peaking yet. And, and we are trying to do all we can to reduce that surge. But that's why we call on all of our citizens right now to please make sure that you're vaccinated and boosted, including our children who are our future. And we know that this pandemic and this virus, the Omicron variant does impact children as well. And although most children will be okay and get better from this infection, we know that there's a group of children that may get very, very sick from this. So right now, really, really important for people to take extra precautions because we are seeing a surge on our hospitals greater than we've ever seen before. And that is a big, big concern to all of us on the leadership team. All right, thank you, Kenny. Next, we'll go to Charles Young with West Virginia News. 
Hi, this is Charles Young with WV News. Um, according to DHHR's numbers, we only gave 218 vaccines statewide yesterday. Uh, given you know that low number and the fact the hospitals are under such strain, has there been any discussion of scaling back the state's vaccine distribution sites and allowing those personnel to be allocated to the hospitals? Thank you. Maybe General, maybe you can answer that, sir. Yes, sir, Governor. So, Charles, two issues there. One is there was an issue with the data feed this morning from CDC. So uh, we think that's part of the, uh, the number issue. But we have plenty of uh, systems in place uh, to provide vaccines to West Virginians that will take them that do not impact the manpower that we need in our hospitals. So our pharmacies, uh, uh, federally qualified health clinics, community health clinics, uh, other locations are stepping up and uh, our health departments and doing those vaccines. So we've got a good plan to make sure that we can still vaccinate, but not have a negative impact on uh, the challenges that we face with staffing in our hospitals. All right, thank you, Charles. Next to Mark Curtis with the Next Star Media. I agree, so let me just put the phone down for just a second. Bear with me, okay? I'll be right back in 30 seconds. Uh, Governor, I have a question on a different subject today. The black mine, uh, black lung benefits for coal miners ran out at the end of 2021. It was not extended because that big uh, Build Back Better $3 trillion social infrastructure plan uh, failed in Congress. Uh, Senator Manchin has introduced a bill now to extend the black lung benefits for the next 10 years, but it's not scheduled for a vote in Congress. Uh, we're talking about thousands of coal miners, their widows, their children who depend on this monthly payment. Um, what, what can you say it's to do to urge Congress to get this thing across the finish line and get the black uh, lung benefits back to these miners? Well, Mark, let, let me just... Uh... Let me just weigh in on that in, in, in as strong a way as I possibly can weigh in. You know, of course, my family and as for generations has been in, in the mining business. And, uh, and we very proudly, uh, you know, have had a, a great relationship with the UMWA, you know, through that time in different mining operations. But uh, through all that, you, if, if you can't see the courage and all of the greatness that our miners have done for this nation forevermore, and we're gonna turn our backs on those people from the political just jargon that goes on in, in Washington, D.C. You know, it is just uh, terrible beyond belief. And I hope and pray that the net result of all, all this, it will all shake out and it will get taken care of. But I'll promise you, we've got a lot of families in West Virginia that are unnecessarily scared to death and worried and, 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 and feel like they're being abandoned and, and absolutely not appreciated in any way. Now, all I can do is bombard the Washington Airways in every way I possibly can to encourage us to do the right thing, to take care of the people that have absolutely taken care of us in so many ways with courage and expertise and craftsmanship like nobody's business. I know, I know the miners, trust me, in every way. And these are people that don't just ask and ask for stuff. They are truly, truly heroes and we need to take care of them. And, and that's not just grandstanding any way. That's just exp you know, expressing my heart and how I feel about these great people because they are true, true heroes. So, uh, you know, Mark, we're working it and, uh, and, 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 you know, surely to God above, we're not going to let this happen, you know. And so, uh, you know, you have to think that at some point in time, you know, cool heads and, uh, and, and the political just crap will stop. But, uh, but, but hopefully we'll get this worked out. All right, thank you, Mark. Next to Evan Bevins with the Parkersburg News and Sentinel. Uh, thank you. I um, wanted to go back to General Hoyer. You mentioned the... Uh, the antibodies that are available, a, a couple of different 
treatments and wanted to see if you could elaborate on that if the 312 number is is weekly and ju just to explain a little bit about how, how that uh, reception and distribution works please sir. The, yes sir governor to, so the 312 is weekly uh, it is distributed across the state based on uh, uh, orders from hospitals and other facilities and we also uh, on several occasions, when uh, one area of the state needed additional and we had it available in other locations, we have uh, a plan to, when available, to crossload uh, that. And as mentioned, Paxlovid, the uh, antiviral, is available in a number of locations across the state, including uh, pharmacies, and uh, is, is right now available. But as Dr. Marsh and Dr. Amjad would point out, there are uh, significant challenges with contraindications for people who take other medication. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. Next to Paul Mullen with WCBC. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, everyone. I want to go with uh, Dr. Amjad on this one. Uh, there are people that have decided for whatever reason that they will not get the vaccine. Uh, is there other things they can do health-wise, vitamins, supplements, whatever, to give them a little bit better protection against uh, COVID-19 or maybe a severe, a severe attack of that. Can you, can you enlighten us, doctor? Thank you. Dr. Amjad, please go. Yes, Governor. Um, Paul, I'll, I'll, I would say no to be a simple answer. I mean, I'll tell you what people have told me that they're doing and what I've read and things, but some people will say, you know, they'll take a lot of vitamins. They'll take a lot of, and these are not wrong things to do. You can take zinc oxide, a lot of vitamin C, a lot of prenatal vitamins. And those things are healthy to do, but keep in mind, you can overtake vitamins too and have a lot of abnormal side effects. But vaccines right now, especially with COVID, they, they are helping you stay out of the hospital. And I know a lot of people that don't want to take the vaccine, especially with, you know, having to take another booster shot and they think it's not working. But I've told people right now who don't want to take the vaccine that it's like wearing a raincoat right now, that it's going to keep you dry, especially right now that COVID is out there and it's, you know, just hammering us down and going to keep you dry. But there isn't anything right now that's going to work better than the vaccine. So you can take all the vitamins you want, but it's really not going to help you right now. Thanks. All right, thank you, Paul. Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Well, let me just look just one second at my notes here. But, uh, you know, I, I want to just, I just want to quote a couple of things that have just come up. <clears throat> and that is, uh, I think Dr. Marsh said, that your risk of dying with the Omicron virus is a hundred times greater than if, you, if, you're, if you're unvaccinated. Your risk of dying from the Omicron virus is a hundred times greater if you've been unvaccinated. Now just think about that. I mean, really and truly, that's, that's, again, the best guy that I can possibly have, or best human, best lady, best guy that I can possibly have as our coronavirus czar. Now, let me just add one other thing. You know, you may think, you may think really hard about one thing. I have a lot of people ask me this question over and over and over. They say, Governor, what do you really think is going to happen? What's really going to happen to us? And I'm going to tell you as bluntly as I can possibly tell you, because we've always been 100% transparent, have we not? I'm going to tell you that truly no one really knows. But I can tell you just this, if we'll step back from it and assess it, 
And we'll say, well, let's just look at if it went really bad or if it went okay. Well, the really bad could be just this. The really bad could be some spinoff of variant to this virus, which we absolutely believe is going to happen. There's going to be continual spinoffs of this variant. You know, whether it be Omicron CD or it be Delta Omicron combined together and we give it another name, you know, but there is absolutely going to be spinoffs. Now, when this happens, we hope and pray that the spinoff is going to be milder. But just what if it weren't, it didn't, it didn't end up milder? And if that be the case, then it could be pretty tough. And we all know that. Now, we also know that you've got 100 times greater chance of being okay and not dying from Omicron if you're vaccinated. Now this sounds like it's going to be another spill to, you know, encourage you to get vaccinated. I really believe in my heart that we're not through this yet. And I believe we've got to live with this. And I believe that we do not need to be mandating and shoving things down people's throat and everything and making them, or trying to make them get vaccinated or whatever it may be. And I believe we should absolutely be continuing to respect everybody. But I also believe that, I, you know, that we would all be foolish to not think that we ought to still remain you know, concerned. So with all of that, I would just say just this. How does it make good sense? We have 82% of our 50 and older people that have been completely vaccinated. 82% of them, and we've got 51% of them that have taken their booster shot. Now tell me how that makes sense. We have 82% of them that were completely vaccinated and 51% of them that have taken the booster shot. I don't see how that makes sense. We absolutely have 90% of our 65 and older that have had, are fully vaccinated and 56.6% .6 of those have taken their booster. In both cases, you're looming from 30 to 35% of the people have not acted and taken their booster shot. I don't get that. And the other thing we know without any doubt that we've got over a hundred, over a thousand people hospitalized right now in, in our West Virginia hospitals. And we know we've got 200 to 250 guardsmen that are out there trying to do the job because we can't staff our hospitals today because we're just overrun. We know that this thing could get better and it surely could get worse. And I only say to you just this, we also know without any question that we could really slow this thing down if we had all run out there and really think really hard about more of a percentage of us getting vaccinated. We know that. So I don't want you to think that I'm on some soapbox, you know, campaigning for the vaccines, but I'm just telling you, look at the numbers. Now, from the standpoint of one other thing, I really mean this. You know, we've made a lot of right decisions here. We've made decisions that, to be perfectly honest, uh, we've taken the best advice we can take from everybody and, and, and then went and made those decisions. But there's no question in my mind that there has been God's presence in those decisions because we could have never made all those decisions on our own. There's no way, there's no way. So I continue to ask him for assistance and help in making these decisions. I continue to tell you just the truth. We do not want this thing to get bad again 
to where it's effect, infecting our children or whatever it may be or, or our elderly and we've got a run on the bank you know, with, with all kinds of issues going on with our hospitals and everything. We don't want another surge. And absolutely, we pray in every way that this thing is going to pass. And we know in every way we've got to live with it. We've got to live with it. We can't shut down. We can't do that anymore. We cannot do that anymore. So with all this and everything, I would just tell you the only thing that I know that we've got, the only thing I know we've got is the fact that if we were more of us were vaccinated, the less would die. And so please, please just consider that. And, uh, you know, I, again, I, 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 I've only gone into this because so many people keep coming up to me and say, well, Governor, what's going to happen? What's going to happen here? What's going to happen? Is this going to get even worse? Is this going to get worse? You know, what's going to happen? Well, it would be frivolous for anybody to say they know because they don't know. There's no playbook. They do not know. You know, and so, so with all that, all we can do is keep telling you the truth and, and hope and pray that the really smart people, the scientists, the medical community and everything is going to get us through this with the help first and foremost of God above. So uh, I'm going to keep trying to come to you and I'm going to keep trying to do everything I can in every way to just represent the truth and be transparent. So again, I just, I would deeply, deeply encourage the people that, uh, that are 50 and older, you know, to really get those booster shots because that is really, really, really important. We continue to do all the tabletop exercises and everything else, but at the end of the day, this thing continues to turn and twist and everything. In my opinion, nobody knows the answer. So we'll keep telling you everything that we know. Thank you so much.